Hey everyone, uh, this is Bethany Lau from Science with Mrs. Lau, and I'm hopping on here to give you a preview of uh, my virtual fly lab that I just put together in the past week and a half to help some teachers out um, who are looking to do a genetics lab but don't have access to their lab right now. Um, this is a great solution also for teachers who are in the classroom, maybe uh, not now, but in the future, that can't afford a fly lab or don't have the time or um, energy or resources it is to actually set one up. This is per gonna be perfect for that teacher, maybe a middle school teacher or um, even a high school teacher that doesn't have um, you know weeks of it at a time to dedicate to a fly lab. So fruit flies are sort of near and dear to my heart. So I studied meiosis and mitosis in fruit flies, Drosophila, uh, at Rutgers University when I was an undergraduate. I worked in a lab for two and a half years, and I worked, I did all tons of things, tons of things, including injecting embryos, dissecting larva brains, and looking at the mitosis in their brains. I um, just, I really loved working with fruit flies, and I feel like it was a great experience for me, and I wanted to give students sort of a taste of that. So, yeah, ignore, that's my... Um, uh, cuckoo clock uh, singing right now if you hear any music in the background. Anyway, so I wanted to give you a taste of uh, what this lab looks like online. So basically what happens is I have, uh, it has four parts. So one is called phenotypes and sexes, one is called stubble, one is called curly, one's called uh, white eyes. So the first Students should always start with one because it kind of gives them uh, the background they'll need to do any of the other three. And then you could have students do one, two, three, four in order to get the full experience, or you could have them just do one and then have groups of students do two or three or four, and then you could have them compare these three. They're, they're made similarly so that they can be compared. So anyway, let's take a look at this. So students will open these uh, files, and um, on each one there is a little bit of kind of fun thrown in so there's fruit flies that move and uh, their students will ed will work with these in the edit mode not the present mode so anyway what they'll do is they'll go down through and they can drag and drop uh, parts of the life cycle so they'll be able to drag like adults embryos the different stages of the larva and they'll know the answer by reading this uh, little blurb on the right hand side uh, then the next the next uh, section, it'll talk about different parts of the fly that often have mutations, like the eyes, the bristles, and the wings. And um, it, this text will kind of describe them different ways that it can be mutated, that different alleles can show different phenotypes. And so here they just look at these, and they d will drag and drop them into the category they go to. So like this is the wild type fly, and this is the stubble fly. Um, and you know curly fly and on and on and then you'll see they'll see ones that have two phenotypes like white-eyed curly and three phenotypes white-eyed stubble and curly then they'll go through and they'll identify the female and the male and it has different um, characteristics that they'll drop and drag and drop these labels and uh, then again over here they'll identify male and female so like the ones with the black rear ends are the males and the ones with the stripes or the females. So being able to identify the sexes of the different flies will help them in parts two, three, and four. And then to end this, they get to name a phenotype just for fun. So fruit fly scientists tend to have a lot of fun with their naming. And so the example that I give here is that um, uh, there's a fly that actually has a mutation that causes it to develop without a heart. And so scientists actually have named it Tin Man, you know, for Wizard of Oz. And um, one that you could tell your students about, I didn't post it in here because, you know, if you're using it in middle school, this might not be the, um, the example to give, but there are, there are mutations that, there's a mutation in fruit flies called Ken and Barbie. And um, it, just like Ken and Barbie, they're missing some key uh, body parts. So anyway, I won't, you can guess what those are. So anyway, students will have, uh, can type the, whatever phenotype they want to name this and this in here just for fun. And what I did for each of these parts is I included uh, the backup pieces. So for instance, if they're doing this, this page, and they accidentally delete one of these squares, 
because these are images. Um, then what happens is they can just go to the extra backup pieces just in case and replace something that they accidentally deleted. Hopefully they don't do this often, but you know, just in case there's pieces for each little part of the lab so they can go back and just select it and copy it because you know, students might accidentally delete it. So each of these comes with a teacher key. So it's pretty much no prep. You'll have all the answers. Um, for you. Now I'm going to show you one of the parts two, three, or four. So each one of these is different and it covers a different uh, mutation and um, type of mutation allele. So what students will do is they'll read this little blurb and this blurb is the same on all three because some students will be doing just part two or just part three or part four. They're going to drag and drop labels. So they'll see that this is the stubble bristle. So they'll drag and drop that into the phenotype and they'll dra drag and drop the genotype into the box there. So the goal is for students to practice identifying like what is a phenotype, what's a genotype, and you know, the in genetics, they usually already know that, but it's good to review. Then on the next slide, they're told to set up the cross, and so it tells them to drag five of the stubble females and three wild-type males. So they'll drag the three type wild-type males, and they'll drag five females over into the little box. And the reason it's three and five is that when you really work in a Drosophila lab, that's always what you do. You do more females than males because the females are kind of the most crucial part. Often you can get away with just like one male because he'll mate with all the females in the vial. But if you don't have enough females and then you might not get enough embryos and your experiment is kind of doesn't work. So the females are the most important. So usually you put a few more of those in per males. Now, now the next part, um, these are the, the adults that they put in earlier, and they're actually told to remove them. And this is a key part to a fruit fly genetics experiment because you don't want your adults, older adults, in there when the eggs hatch because then they'll confuse the results. So after about three, four days, sometimes you wait a little longer, you remove all the, all the adults and, you know, sacrifice them so that these embryos can grow up alone and be uncon uncontaminated with their parents. Anyway, so um, what happens here is, okay, now after that, uh, well, after they drag the adults out, and I won't drag them out now because I, I figure I won't mess up this file because this is a student file. But anyway, they get to see, they're told that they're going to wait 10 to 12 days and go to the next slide, and they get a little fun um, with uh, watching their next generation of flies crawl all over the screen. So I just kind of made it a little fun, and they're supposed to wave their arms and pretend that they're using FlyNap, which is the chemical used in, in usually high school labs to put them to sleep. In university labs, we use carbon dioxide um, hoses to like these little containers. But anyway, they move to the next slide, and then they're given their progeny um, that they are to count. And so what they do is they can drag and drop the individual flies into the, where they go. So they examine the flies and say, okay, this is wild type, wild type female, and it's okay that they're all piled on top of each other in these little boxes. The goal is to just add the totals in, and they'll find out that, for instance, in this, all of them are wild type, none of them are stubble. So this is going to be zero, zero, and this is going to be a certain number in here. And then they get to look at the initial results. So they are going to describe what phenotype they found in the progeny, what allele, what, how would they write the genotypes for those progeny, and what is, what is their guess at whether stubble allele is recessive or dominant. Now, you could end here if you wanted to, but in order to find out whether that stubble allele is, on a, is in a gene on an autosome or a sex chromosome, then you would move on to the, to the rest of the lab. So basically they do the crossover, but they call, do what's called a reciprocal cross. So in st earlier, they, they crossed um, stubble females with wild type males, and now they're doing the opposite. They're, crossing wild type females to stubble males and they do the same exact thing they just did and they get to see some crawling flies again and for this case the results are the same so all the progeny are still wild type and that means and is explained to them on here if the cross and the reciprocal cross show the same results the newly discovered mutation allele is 
in a gene on the autosome. So the idea is that if you switch them, you switch which, which are female and male on the cross, if the results are different, then that gene or, or allele is on the X chromosome. So it, it's kind of gives you a little bit of taste of Drosophila genetics, but not making it overwhelming. So because it leads them through the whole thing step by step. And again, at the end, there's extra backup pieces just in case they delete some flies or lose some labels. Okay. So that's about it. So three and four are very similar. They work with different mutations. So Virtual Fly Lab 3 shows uh, the curly mutation, and it, ha it will have a slightly different result than the stubble, and wide eyes is different than curly or stubble. So the students can get a taste of three different types of uh, alleles that result that can cause a mutation in a different phenotype in flies. And um, there you have it. So if you have any questions about this virtual fly lab, let me know. And um, I'll answer it in the comments as soon as I can. All right. I hope you have a great day. Bye.